Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellen from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is episode 90, Keep the Last Duplicate. All right, Mike. Hey, this is a great question. This is sent in by Tony. Tony's from Atlanta. Uh, it's funny, Tony you know, lives 500 miles from me, but he says, oh, you're from Akron. you got to stop by the gas station and try their milkshakes. And sure enough, at the Sheets gas station up here in Ohio, they have great milkshakes. So you wouldn't think it's it's true, but uh, so thanks to Tony for the great milkshake trick. Uh, we've changed Tony's data here. He has a huge data set, 7,000 rows, and it, it has uh, employees, employees. And sometimes an employee shows up twice, uh, it's sorted by date. So the, the latest record for that employee is last. Tony says, we need a way to keep just the last version. Remove duplicates gives us the first one. That's not what we want. We want the last one. All right, so Mike, I'll let you go first. Let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, so uh, we have duplicates and we want the last one. So there's two records here and we want to extract the records. Uh, if there's duplicates, the last ones. If there's no duplicates, we want to just extract that. Well, I'm going to go ahead and add an extra column and then use the filter. So I'm going to say last. Now, let's start off. I'm going to see if I can count how many there are of each one. So I'm going to go equals count if. And the range, well, I'm going to click right on the first cell in that name column and hit the colon, shift colon, comma, and then click back over here, close parentheses. Now I'm going to lock this A2. This is an expandable range. That one's locked. This one's not. So it, as it goes down, the range will expand. So right now, if, for example, when we get down to Fanny, it'll only be seen one Fanny. But when it gets down to the second one, because this range is expanding, it'll put a 2 there. So you ready? So the criteria is always going to be a relative cell reference. Control Enter, and I'm going to double click and send it down. All right, so you see I get a 2 here for Fanny. Down here, this is the third one. All right, now, I, this column is sorted, right? So everything's sorted. So I'm going to take advantage of that. When I get to here, I'm going to notice that the one below is different. All right, so I'm going to use an AND function. I'm not, not an AND, an IF. I'm going to say IF this right here, that's a relative cell reference, 4 to my left, is not, that's less than, greater than, not equal to the one below, comma, in that case, so for example, when we get down to uh, Barker Fanny, these are not equal. So I'm going to put for the second Fanny the two. Notice when I get to a occurrence of just one single person, these are automatically going to be different or not equal. All right, so that's the value of true, comma, the value of false. So I'm going to put double quotes, close parentheses, control enter, and then I'm going to double click and send this down. So now, oh, I have blanks for ones that I don't want. Now I'm going to simply, I want a true or false in this column. I'm going to come right here and say, I'm interested in the ones that are either a number or not text. Now I usually use is number, but I'm going to use is non text. That's, it just means it's not text here. You could just as easily use is number. In fact, now we have a false there, a false there. It goes, those ones are the first listings. Down here, uh, we have these two falses for Norma. All right now, I'm going to turn on the filter. I'm going to click in a single cell in the data set. There's empty cells all the way around and Control-Shift-L, or you just use that button right there. And now I'm going to use the filter. I want to see everything that's true, so I'm going to uncheck false. Immediately, I can see over here there's blue, which means it's filter. I can also see there's missing numbers. Now I'm going to click in a single cell and Control Asterisk to highlight them all. Control C. Notice when you have a filter and you highlight everything in Control C, the dancing ants are going around just the visible cells. So now I come over to my output sheet and Control V. And then I could point to my smart tag and say, hey, give me the column widths. And there's all of the uh, last occurrence of any duplicates. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, that's wild. The is non text. I don't think I've ever used that. All right, now my, my first reaction was the formula. Check and see if A2 is not equal to A3. And then I wasn't going to filter. I was just going to copy, paste values, sort all the trues of the ones I keep. But then I said, okay, wait, 
remove duplicates is really a fast way to solve this problem. The problem with remove duplicates is it's keeping the first of each person and throwing out the rest. So I said, what if we just came here to end date, sort Z to A, that way the the latest record for each person shows up on top. Now remove duplicates, unselect all, name, and OK. 63 values removed, 531 unique values remain. We end up with just the oldest, or I mean the, the latest dated record for each person because we brought those naturally to the top. Uh, so if you have Excel 2007 or newer, it might be a good way to go. Otherwise, uh, the formula method will work. All right, well, hey, I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun.